uh, recording posted in our training area and then we'll do a screen share here so that we can record the questions as they get answered. I just realized I'm still wearing my Fletch shirt. I guess I didn't need to actually introduce myself because of that. So, <laughs> Okay, make sure this comes through just fine. Um, yeah, I think we're good here. Cool. Okay, P. Hey, Fletch, sorry I didn't pee me this week. Got sick and I'm still down. Oh, yeah, no worries, dude. Um, I don't know what's going on, but there is some kind of nasty illness or bug um, that is kind of hitting everywhere in the country. Greg and I both have literally been sick since the end of November and neither one of us really recall ever being sick in the last 15 years. So yeah, I had a nasty head cold and chest cold that just wouldn't go away for over a month and then it wound up turning into kind of digestional flu over the weekend and it pretty much just took me out for two or three days. So hopefully that's all cleared up um, at this point, but all my kids are sick and it, it's kind of, you know, it's kind of crazy. Every, everybody has, I seem to talk to <clears throat> has got something and it just doesn't seem to go away. So I won't tend to comment on it too much but uh yeah it's not it's no bueno no bueno at all all right cliff sweet shirt <laughs> thanks yeah my wife my wife dug this up and uh i figured i'd wear it and shoot some funny photos and stuff like that today um but i'll probably kind of i don't know i've got some commercial ideas that i'm gonna play around with moving forward on the whole fletch concept so that should be fun to fun to shoot some videos on and stuff like that Yeah, we've got somebody here posting from the UK. Um, I've actually got a couple friends in Australia, and they have it as well. So it's, I mean, it's not just in the U.S. It's crazy. Um, you know, I know that it tends to hit places after the holidays when everybody's kind of stressed and probably slept too little and drank too much and had all sorts of stuff going on. But yeah, it, um, it caught me just after Thanksgiving and hasn't let go yet. <clears throat> All right, all right, got something here from Brian. All right, hey Fletch, I'm thinking about creating some lead gen sites in smaller geographic areas. Uh, do you think my city guide type site would work better or would a number of EMDs be a better option? Um, what's been, uh, what have you been having the most success with lately in your lead gen part? Um, you know, EMDs still work really, really well. Uh, you cannot, I'm gonna, yeah, we're still good on sound. Um, you can't be very aggressive with anchor text on them. Um, the reason they work well in local, one of the reasons they work well in local, is that you don't, SEO in local is, is not nearly as challenging as it is with national keywords or, um, you know, some of the more competitive, you know, affiliate stuff, you know, in gold or health or losing weight, things like that. Um, with an EMD, You've got, well, one of the ways to, to really make use of an EMD is to build out an EMD that you're only going to try to rank for one or, you know, maybe two keywords with. It's going to be a very, very narrow focus. Um, with stuff like that, if you can hit it with two links and very often rank and rank very well, uh, especially if you integrate some social platforms, you know, like YouTube or Facebook or uh, Twitter uh, Pinterest, LinkedIn, all of those really high domain authority sites, you can set up much along the lines of what we have going with uh, OneFeed. You know, so when you post content, it syndicates from your site out to those different profiles and you get backlinks on them. So uh, that's one very pretty quick and easy way to set up and rank EMDs. But like I said, it's pretty tough with an EMD to rank for very much. Um, as far as breadth goes. So in a local area that's not very large population wise, you may be better off building something that's a little more generic like a My City Guide and be able to really rank a bunch of different vertical industries, you know, like the plumbing industry or even more general than that, the home improvement industry or car repair 
or landscaping services or whatever it might be. Uh, because what you're going to have is still very, very little competition, but just the activity and good links coming back, even if they're going and pointing toward different silos within your website, you're going to get some buoyant effects from just the overall domain authority going up. Um, if I were you, you can definitely do both. I, I would do both. That, that would be my answer. Uh, they both work, but if you just really have time for one site, it may behoove you to go ahead and do like a My City Guide site for your area. Um, the other thing that having that My City Guide site does is it really leverages you to go out and pick up SEO clients. You can just point to that site and say, hey, this is one of the sites that I own and control that I rent space on, but I also do SEO for customers. And a site like that, my experience communicating the value of that site to a potential customer is sometimes a little easier than having an EMD that you point to and, and show the rankings of because sometimes a customer will look at it and they'll see, oh, you're ranking for the exact keyword that that domain has. Anybody could do that. That's easy to do. Um, so that would be kind of just, the way I answer questions typically is to have just kind of a little talking session about the way I would think about answering the question if it were me. So hopefully it helps you out and uh, gives you some information there. Okay, I think we've got Cliff we're ready for here. Yeah, yeah. All right, Cliff. Whoops, let's get this highlighted. Okay, Cliff, I'm currently sitting at number two with one of my client's main keywords, and the number one spot is an EMD. I've been putting a lot of work into the backlink campaigns and social, some DAS as well. Anything specific you can suggest to give me that last bump? Um, it may just be time and getting some on-page metrics, Cliff. Uh, with sites that have been established for a while, Google has got a little bit of a track record as far as how that site that's in number one performs. You know, their bounce rate, the time on site, things like that. Sometimes it really is just a matter of some time and getting enough click-throughs so that Google realizes that you've got a, a better site than what's at number one. If the number one site is an EMD, um, they've already got that domain name. That, that, that really is kind of the, if you've got that and you've got great SEO, it's pretty tough to take it out. Um, but like I mentioned in the previous question, it makes it tough for them to have a lot of anchor text. That is their keyword. So, you know, over time, if, if you are not able to overcome them, uh, just from the very fact that you will be able to give them more links, your, meaning your site, your client's site, give them more links that have your keyword anchor text, uh, you'll be able to take them down, most likely. Um, but that being said, that, that's kind of what I would initially think, you know, not knowing any, any uh, more specifics about the keyword and the timing and everything like that. All right, Anthony, having a hard time seeing your screen. Um, yeah, maybe a bandwidth issue on your end, Anthony. I'm looking at the uh, broadcast. I've got two computers running, so I monitor how things are coming up, and it looks like it's in uh, it's in pretty good uh, working order currently. Um, it should show essentially, you know, my Joshua Fletcher website. It does kind of a, um, a picture picture in picture to affin infinity. Um, there's I haven't figured out a better way around that yet. Um, I would have to use a couple different windows to do anything different than that, but it should let you see. If we if we go into any demonstrations, what I do is just essentially click onto a different window, and so you'll wind up with. I'll, I'll do it real quick. A full page. Whoops. Let me get rid of some of this stuff so that we don't um, have anything that we don't want to show. Um, you'll essentially have a whole screen of whatever I'm showing. So. You know, if we go over to OpenSide Explorer, if I'm doing a demo or something and we're looking at uh, at links, you know, you'll get a better video feed of something that's actually, you know, worth looking into. Uh, if you're not live on these sessions, uh, the recording of the actual questions should be good. Yeah, now I'm getting a weird bandwidth thing. Oh, there we go. Okay, so it should be good. Okay, um, we've got somebody that's entered name, so I think it's probably the individual from the United Kingdom. Hey, Fletcher, uh, 
I purchased an expired domain, uh, but it had a back end order, so I won't be able to get it get into it for nine days. Anything um, that you're familiar with there? Yeah, that happens sometimes. Um, each registrar has a little different um, process that you may experience when you acquire a domain that's registered there. Uh, if it's GoDaddy, there even is some stuff that happens on the back end that's not, it, it's not an immediate transfer. It's not a, an, an immediate purchase. Uh, sometimes it takes longer than others. I've, I've got a site, this is certainly not to scare anybody off, but one that, that wound up with some um, some legal action on it so that it's it's been locked up for a couple months now. Um, for the most part, when you purchase a domain through auction, if it's at Register Compass, it's going to be in your account within a couple weeks. Uh, nine days is not, it's not ideal, and it's, it's probably not the most common time frame, but it's also not that out of the ordinary. Um, usually somewhere between, you know, four to four to ten days, you know, if there is some kind of a, a hold or a lock on it it is pretty common a lot of times though you'll pick you'll pick up a domain and it, it, it's available immediately um, especially the ones at GoDaddy if you've got a domain at GoDaddy and they're the previous registrar on it and you win it through a GoDaddy auction it's pretty much an immediate transfer unless there's some other kind of weird thing that you've got a another hoop that you've got to jump through okay um, and then Thane that was my last question <laughs> all right what else do we got here um, how would I know this in the future? Um, you really don't. If, if this is you, Thane, I'm not sure if you, if you put your name in now. So um, I, I think that's what that means. But um, in the future, I've not really found out a way around that. Um, you know, I know how to use the registrars, and I know which ones are, are tricky to work with. And I know which ones tend to be pretty easy to work with. Um, as far as auctions go, though, if you want the domain, you kind of got to work with where they're registered. Um, you know, I know Network Solutions is get, you know gives people problems. I don't particularly like it when you re renew domains there. They try to charge you like thirty bucks a year. It's all sorts of issues. But the first time you get them transferred into your name, you need to kind of just work with that process long enough. To, to be able to get them transferred someplace else if you want to. Um, when you're starting out, it may seem like all of them are going to be that difficult. They're not at all, uh, especially if this is one of the first ones that you've, uh, if, that you've really done. Uh, it, it may give you the impression that it's a lot more tedious than it is most of the time. So I, I don't really have an answer for you as far as knowing how long it will take. Sometimes it's even a little difficult to see where they're registered if they've got you know privacy protection or if they've run it through Cloudflare or something like that uh, but for the most part it, it, it uh, is a pretty quick transfer and it shouldn't take you more more than a week in the worst case
<clears throat> okay, question here from Steve. Hey Fletch, I have a couple affiliate sites and also a, a couple of small local clients so far. The affiliate sites and the client sites are all in different niches. Should I be using, should I be building PBN networks for each separate niche that I'm dealing with or can I mix them? Thanks. Okay. So what you can do and what's optimal are different things. Um, because there is a, a ranking factor that has to do with relevant content. It's a pretty powerful ranking factor. So if you were to get, like if, if I were going to try to rank Joshua Fletcher for online marketing coaching, if I were to get a link from Moz, you know, or, you know, OpenSight Explorer, the, the parent company of OpenSight Explorer, uh, that has content very relevant to online marketing, that link is going to carry a lot of influence in Google's eyes to say, not only is this a powerful link from a powerful site that's trusted, but it's also got a lot of relevant content. So this is something we're really going to count quite a bit. It doesn't mean that getting a site, a link from a site that is good, which a PBN site would be, would be that's powerful and can be trusted that's not relevant to your niche is not going to help you rank. It's just not going to help you rank as much. So when you extrapolate that and turn it into which one of those should you do, if you're trying to get the most ranking power that you possibly can, building PBN, a PBN, which is plural, it's a network, it's a, it's a group of sites, building a PBN out for each of the niches or industries that you are in is going to be preferable. It's going to give you more ability to rank with the same number of links than one that is generic would give you. Uh, but I still have a lot of generic PBN sites that I have not changed You know, over the course of the time that I've been involved in online marketing. They still work, they still pass good link juice, but because they are more generic in nature, they are not pushing as much ranking power through each one of those links as they could if they were very specific for one niche or industry or topic. Um, so as you kind of grow whatever PBN you've currently got, you can probably leave and have it generic and have a few generic you know, content sites. It's not necessarily a problem. Sometimes those look very natural. You know, if I were to build a blog, it would probably have some things about you know, starting a family halfway through your life and changing careers halfway through your life. And it might have some stuff on college athletics. It might have some stuff on scotch. I mean, who knows? It would have a lot of different things. Um, and so those aren't necessarily unnatural sites, but you can put more emphasis into niche relevant sites and get more power from them. So I, I would definitely put your focus on niche relevant content that's that's topical but if you've got some that are generic in nature you can definitely use those and make use of them uh, to, to rank I, I have a lot that are a lot of sites that are ranked only with with kind of generic links well, I guess I'll call those generic links yeah okay Anthony is it better to create an EMD site for let's say we buy houses Austin or Austin house buyer my goal is to target different keywords in other cities and sell them to local area investors. Okay, okay. Um, you, you probably want to check on the We Buy Houses and just make sure that it's not a trademark business name because I know that's kind of almost a uh, like a franchise opportunity now. And you don't want to create an EMD with something that has, uh, I don't know, trademarked or copyrighted um, names in it. Like if you put, you know, NikeReviews.com, Nike will send you a letter very quickly saying, um, you know, you, this, this doesn't work uh, because you're, you're tra essentially trading on our brand. Um, but aside from that, what you'd probably want to look at is... Let me just make sure that I see what your question. Your goal is to target different keywords in other cities. Okay, so like you were going to target uh, and then sell to 
to local area investors. Okay, okay, so you're looking at ranking like in Austin. If somebody were trying to sell their home and, and they went to Google and typed in Austin house buyer because they want to sell their house for cash to possibly an investor, and then you would be able to sell that lead to somebody in, in Dallas or you know Chicago or wherever that's interested in buying houses. Yeah, I would, I would probably opt for that second option, just thinking that through, Anthony. Uh, it seems like a keyword that would be probably more used uh, than the first one, and that first one, again, might just have some you know, business, you know, legal hoopla that you don't wanna wor worry about. Um, that Austin house buyer, too, you can, you know, just because it's an EMD, it gives you some flexibility. Um, in what you're going to rank for because even a tight EMD like that you're probably going to rank for things like uh, um, house buyer cash Austin and some things like that you can put some inner pages together and rank for that stuff so I would probably opt for that second um, that second choice you have there which is Austin house buyer and then real estate investors yeah yeah I think well hopefully I understood your question if I did not and I totally gave an answer that has nothing to do with what you were curious about let me know I'm, I'm more than happy to uh, <clears throat> to answer a question if I did not understand it properly it's totally totally my fault on on this end if that happens And I think, by the way, I think that's probably a pretty strong strategy. Um, I could see that working really well because I know house buyers are always looking for kind of striking first. And if somebody is looking to, uh, you know, sell their house, they love being able to talk to them and say, hey, yeah, we can cut you a check, you know, tomorrow <laughs> kind of thing. Okay, a little more info or questions from Anthony here. I currently have a local site ranking for my target keyword at number 26. And many other keywords also ranking. Should I create different pages for each of those other keywords on my site in order to rank those other keywords or just build more? Whoops, kind of hopped around on me a little bit there. Okay, or just build more to the main keyword. Um, if you build more to the main keyword, you will likely improve the rankings of those other keywords, but not as drastically. If you create an inner page for those keywords specifically, you're gonna get a lot more ranking power. Let me show you just, I, I, this site you know, is just an example site, so don't take too much from it. But like this Mile High Plumbing site I put together to kind of demonstrate what a silo website looks like, um, you know, for instance, if we go to Lakewood here and, um, like if we looked at, okay, so here's a keyword I've got. This is mobile home plumbing services in Lakewood, right? So this is the actual URL. If, if this is too small to see, URL is mile high plumbing slash Lakewood, Colorado plumber slash mobile home plumbing services, Lakewood. Okay. So the actual page, inner page URL is this, same as the title of this page. Um, I haven't checked this, if this is a keyword that I rank well for or not. <clears throat> but in Google, we'll just pull it up and see. And yeah, I'm ranked number one for that on that page, the mobile home plumbing services, Lakewood. And then um, I'm actually ranked number two for it as well. Uh, and we'll see what this URL is. And this is just Plumbing Service Lakewood. So this URL ranks for Mobile Home Plumbing Service Lakewood just because it's fairly close and there's not probably not a lot of competing pages. So if you are so inclined to build some more content, I would definitely build an inner page to rank for those other keywords that you wanna rank for 
just because it is a very good strategy to get your keyword in that URL. Very, very powerful. Okay, Thane Fletch, that was my first experience uh, with a domain auction ever. Okay, yeah, so that probably definitely left a, uh, oh boy, this is going to take some some doing kind of, you know, mindset. But yeah, it's, it's definitely not like that all the time thing. Um, and I have never done anything like this before. I'm trying to do a feedback loop. Would you recommend getting a host or uh, doing a host like it is on our OMG page, if that makes sense? Okay, let me read that. Would you recommend getting a host or doing the host like it is on our OMG page? Yeah, I'm not sure about that last question there, Thane. If you are um, trying to do that. So with the feedback loop, that's one of the reasons why OMG, this is a great question, by the way. It's, it, it gives me a chance to kind of talk about it a little bit because it's something that it, almost everybody encounters at some point in time. Uh, the fact that you're thinking about it ahead of time is great. But um, so the feedback loop is often how people learn. They try something and they see if they achieve success or pleasure or, you know, pain and frustration. And then they say, okay, well, this is either right or wrong. Uh, with SEO, it becomes very challenging, especially for somebody without the resources or the background knowledge to get into it because that feedback loop continues to grow longer and longer and have a higher and higher barrier to entry. Um, there are things with ranking a site that you may not know whether or not you did them right for three weeks. So the fact that Greg has gone through the trouble of testing them all out and seeing what works and what does not work will save you the trouble of saying, oh crap, I hope I did that right. If you follow the instructions on setting up a website properly, hosting it properly, all that kind of thing, then you're, you've done it right. Sometimes it is a little nerve wracking to say, oh, I hope I didn't you know, miss something there. But for the most part, as long as you follow kind of the instructions, then you're in good shape. But beyond that, as far as hosting goes, what I would do is go to like IP Networks. Uh, Greg, Gregory Ortiz has a link for that hosting company. It's a great hosting company for what we do SEO wise because they not only have independent IP addresses, but they also have blocks of their servers that essentially have a different hosting company's name. So there were some updates recently. If you're just now getting into this, don't take it too much, you know, as far as needing to know all the details. But some updates came through the end of last year that kind of gave a lot of people a shake up because all of their sites were hosted with the same company and they were linked to one another, even though they were on different IP addresses. And they wound up getting some sites that kind of got hit, you know, DNDEX or whatever it might be. IP Networks is already a step ahead of that game as far as the way they report to uh, the internet, who they are. Uh, so if you've not yet got hosting set up, I would kind of start there. It's going to be, again, it, you're going to have to go through the process of learning how to interact with the WHM, which stands for Web Host Manager. Greg's got the videos and, and they, he tells you how to walk through it. It's kind of a standard piece of software. But it's what you will need to learn to get your sites hosted properly and set up properly. So you'll essentially kind of carve out a little space on the hosting um, server and then say, okay, you know, I'm going to point this website at that space and then you configure a few more things and then you go over to where the site's registered and you point the name servers over to that new place and then voila, it's all good. You install WordPress and you're off to building the site. So if that's the kind of the question or where you're going with, should I get the hosting set up before you get the site transferred to you, I would. Um, uh, because the other thing it's going to let you do is once that's set up, if you want to just go buy a money site that's an EMD or my city guide or whatever you want to do, you can get it hosted there without, um, without getting too much um, kind of behind the game as far as, you know, just sitting around for four or five days. If you're ready to kind of roll on that stuff, you can get something set up and start practicing. Um, if you are just kind of like, okay, you know, I'm, I'm not going to 
go charging forward, there's definitely a lot of more videos I need to watch and get trained on. You can certainly do that. You know, this is not a race. And certainly, you know, we, we definitely like to talk about the ability to turn your money over, money over quickly in this. But quick is different for everybody. You know, I, I needed to be able to pay my bills. And so I had to go out and start selling stuff before I really even had it. I had to sell stuff and then make it. Um, you know, cotton, I think, took four four or five months to really get going and now it's just crushing it. So, um, you know, certainly don't, don't think you've got to, you know, get things hosted and set up and, and ranked within any certain amount of time. But, um, I know I kind of went off on a little bit of a spiel there. Um, so let me just make sure I didn't miss something in that question. Yeah. So hopefully that, uh, answered the question. If not, just let me know what uh, I could re, um, rephrase it as. Uh, do you recommend using Cloudflare for IP masking? Yeah, you definitely can, Ryan. I've got it on a lot of my sites that were hosted in what we call SEO hosting, which meant that one hosting company offered the ability to set up a bunch of different IP addresses, and you could allocate those in your web host manager. And so for those sites, I now run... I think I've moved a lot, well, maybe half of them. Um, I, it, it's definitely a good move. I just have not gotten around to moving everything back over, um, or not back over, but running everything through Cloudflare. Uh, what Cloudflare does is it offers another level of masking. So if somebody looks up your domain or IP address, they will see the host as Cloudflare as opposed to the actual host where your server is located. It's essentially your server serves data through Cloudflare and then Cloudflare serves data to the internet to the rest of the people. So it looks like Cloudflare is the actual hosting company, which is going to be, I guess, you know, big enough or generic enough where you're not gonna get necessarily tagged or flagged for having your entire network on the same hosting. But uh, yeah, if you, uh, I think there's a, a website that says, I think it's like who, yeah, who is hosting this, is it? Yeah, so you can put a domain name in here. So let's just look like uh, ecobuiltgroup.com. That's my old construction website. Yeah, Bluehost comes up. So if you if you put a site in here that was hosted at Cloudflare, it would come up as Cloudflare. So what it lets you do is to kind of break up your footprint from your money sites and your PBN and have it run through different places. So these are just still on the old static, you know, name servers that came, uh, that came standard with the hosting account where this site was originally hosted before I got into OMG. So that's where, you know, Cloudflare would come into, uh, would, would become valuable if, if people were doing that and wanted to see where you were hosted. Okay, and then Anthony, um, also my leads are, also if my leads are for seller keywords, like I need to sell my house uh, instead of we buy houses. Uh, yeah, part, part three. So you bring up a great point here, Anthony, and that is to think about your website as the go-between if you're if you're doing leads or if you're selling affiliate products or if you're selling your own product really the same thing your website is kind of the the lens and on one side of that lens is somebody that's looking to buy something and on the other side of that lens is somebody looking to sell something and you know the keywords that we rank for need to be keywords that the buyer is interested in and not just what the seller believes they're selling. So, you know, if uh, in that situation that the keywords almost become flip-flopped because, it, you know, the person with money 
is the person who is going to be putting the website up. Like I buy houses kind of thing. Well, I'm the one with money and I want to buy your house. It becomes kind of the lens becomes flip-flopped. And so in that situation, even though the keywords are flopped, you're still fine ranking for the, the client facing keywords. So somebody that wants to sell their house, say, um, are most likely going to be searching for a way to sell their house. They're not necessarily going to be searching for somebody saying that they buy houses. Doesn't mean that you won't be able to pick up leads and clients, you know, searchers on the internet that type in the opposite of that. But for me, you know, if, if taken in a different, I'm trying to think of a different context. That's that's one that's kind of unique a little bit in that real estate market uh, because very often, you know, solicitors, well, gold, I guess, would be something else. Like we buy jewelry. Um, you know, somebody with a necklace that's looking to, you know, sell their necklace for, you um, you know, gold prices as opposed to jewelry prices would probably say, you know, where can I sell my my gold jewelry as opposed to saying, um, you know, typing in the, the phrase, I buy gold jewelry, if that makes sense at all. I know it kind of gets a little abstract because in this situation, we usually think of the person on the internet that's typing something in. He's like, I'm going to go buy something. You know, I've got money and I want to go find this product that I can buy. But in those, you know, kind of buyer niches, which are like homes or real estate or, you know, you know, gold, jewelry, it's kind of the opposite. It's, it's flip-flopped a little bit. So hopefully I'm not confusing you or certainly anybody else on the call because I understand what you're getting at there. Um, my answer would be rank for both, but I would still tend to believe that people who are trying to sell their home will type in a home buyer. So home buyer in Austin. If I'm trying to sell my house, that's probably what I would type in. I think most people would be that way. Doesn't mean it's gonna be everything. And, and you might actually find no competition and still some buyers with that opposite keyword that, that would work for you. You just have to test that out. It's not really a market I'm that familiar with, but I, I do understand kind of where you're coming from if that's the, uh, the question there. And it's a great question. Uh, okay, Mike, uh, when you're doing local keyword traffic estimates, any rules for national keyword and relating estimated search volume down to local qualifiers? No real search volume for state qualifier, but 8,000 national keyword. Yeah, I would look at, you know, if you've got a situation like that, Mike, I would say it's like Arizona. I don't even know where we rank population wise, but just say we're in the United States. There's 300 million people. Arizona has just say 3 million to make the math easy. So that's 1% of the national population. 1% of the national keyword traffic would be a logical extrapolation. Uh, but that being said, as you know, I've, I've talked about before, and, and it's kind of, it's a little misleading if you go only off of that Google Keyword Planner, which is about all you can go off of, as far as the estimated traffic you're gonna get. It's a good place to start, and it's actually kind of the baseline, because the Google Keyword Planner tool will not report a lot of long tail keyword searches. So what I usually try to do is figure out what my population base is compared to the national population base. If, if I'm comparing you know, a local keyword to a national keyword and then just take that as a, you know, a percentage of the overall and then have that be my base. And sometimes the long tail variations will give you a two or 300% bump in what that, you know, what that reported value is gonna be. Um, because you're gonna, you're just gonna wind up with weird long tail variations. You're gonna think, get keywords that you rank for that you never really thought you'd rank for, and it's just one of those things. So, um, I, I still very much go back to the keyword planner tool just because we talk about ranking in Google, so it makes sense for us to take Google's data and extrapolate that for our purposes in talking about traffic estimates. But at the same time, it's it's not going to be precise at all, and and rarely is even accurate. So that that's my thought on how I would still build that out and try to figure out exactly how much, or not exactly, but try to figure out about what traffic I'm going to get, and all the while knowing that I'm most likely going to be pretty wrong 
but I still use it as the basis of, uh, of how I sell and price my SEO and leads. Okay. All right, Pat. Hey, how you doing, man? Um, I noticed yesterday a Facebook post from early 2013 became active again. Uh, it seemed to be one of the earlier conversations about paper lead websites between you and Joe. Yeah. <laughs> uh, could you please elaborate a little bit about what has changed in how you find, build, rank, and sell leads for those websites since you began in early 2013? Yeah, Pat, not a problem at all. So Pat's referring to um, a post that Joe actually called me this morning to kind of chuckle about the fact that, you know, those posts sometimes get buried and then they pop up again you know, a few months later, and it's like, holy crap, I didn't even remember that we, you know, had been discussing that stuff. That one was from, like, April of 2013, which is, like, two months, maybe, after I joined OMG, maybe three months. And at that time, what I was doing with kind of the paper lead model really hasn't changed that much to what I do now. Um, the one thing I think probably that's a trend that I do more now than I did then is I build sites out that are more as far as the domain name goes Pat that are more like this mile high plumbing so it's not an EMD it's branded but it's it tells you what the site is in the name mile high plumbing okay Denver is the mile high city anybody in Denver is gonna see mile high plumbing and say oh that looks like a legitimate business it's obviously a plumbing company. It's most likely in Denver and then what I do is, you see the URL structure I've got, I, I don't know if you were on earlier when I was talking about it, but these inner pages are the ones that wind up ranking for most of my keywords. Uh, what I was doing at that time was to put a lot, and really my focus at that time, was to put an EMD together that would be plumbingservicelakewood.com and rank it. And then another, you know, another website would be um, you know, like this one, drain cleaning Lakewood. And so I had a, a whole lot of sites. Well, what that, and it, and it works, it still works today. It, it's a great way to rank. It's a great way to rank easily because that domain name carries a ton of power. But the, I guess the flip side of that is that you've got more site setup time involved. You've got higher hosting costs. You've got some limitations on what you can do with your links, your backlinks, because you're going to be very limited in the anchor text you can throw at that, that it, that's keyword dense. Um, and so now my, a bigger piece of what I do is to build sites out like this, like this Mile High Plumbing site. And it, it doesn't mean, I, I still have all the EMDs. I, I really haven't lost many of them or got them, you know, none of them, as far as I know, have been de-indexed. Um, some of them got hacked and got, um, you know, put into Google's pure spam that I may not have recovered uh, just because I didn't want to take the time. It wasn't worth it to me. But for the most part, a lot of the sites I build out now are very similar to this. And I still do put EMDs together, but I put them together only for some of the higher value keywords. And if I can find an EMD that doesn't look too convoluted, you know, if it's a site that, that requires you know, three or four keywords plus the city name, I'm not gonna put an EMD together. I'll just try to rank an inner, an inner page on another website. So beyond that though, um, I think the only difference is that I prefer CallZoo as my call tracking platform. It does f more for me than CallFire does. I still have, uh, I don't know, maybe 40 numbers on CallFire that I, I'll probably just keep there for now. I haven't moved over to CallZoo, but all my new phone numbers I set up are on CallZoo, and CallZoo is used to track those. Uh, so, um, aside from those two changes, though, I kind of read through that post, and uh, let me see if if it's anywhere near the top here. I can at least grab it so that anybody is oh yeah Mary just commented that uh, Network Empire I think had another office hours earlier today so imagine some people were over there um, where is that post 
Should be up here someplace. Anyway, I'm not going to spend the whole time looking for it, but. Yeah, as opposed to that Joe Marfolio put together in like April of 2013. And, uh, you know, we kind of did some back and forth on on what we were doing at the time. There really was, we had, there was certainly no training on the paper lead at that time in OMG. And, uh, you know, I was kind of just figuring it out because I knew what I wanted as a contractor. And Joe had been doing online marketing for a while and he kind of had figured it out on the other end. So um, he's definitely a resource to make use of in that space. Yeah, I'm not seeing it, guys. But anyway, that's what Pat's talking about. Um, and it was a pretty good thread. I mean, I think there was, I don't know, maybe 40 posts on it that were back and forth. Um, and some, some really good stuff that's still pretty pertinent. Um, but as far as overall strategy goes, not really that much has changed, Pat. Still works really well. Um, and that you know, also gives me kind of an opportunity a little bit to I guess, preach on or harp on the fact that you, you don't have to go do every big new thing. You know, that's a business model I really don't see changing, you know, for a while. I, I could continue to just rank sites and build my income base up very, very easily selling leads. It's something that is, is pretty, pretty much tied up. You know, all the loose ends are tied up. I know how to get new clients. I know how to rank sites. I know how to deliver clients or deliver leads. I know how to track the calls. I know how to invoice. And I put all that training in there. So, um, you know, for people who are it's like they found something that's working. Like if they're selling affiliate and they're like, well, I really should go do this other thing now. It may not always be the answer. I'm not saying it's that, that you shouldn't go do other things or look into it. But if what you're doing is working, you may just need to scale it or be happy with it and use it to trade up or, you know, buy some commercial real estate or some other kind of thing. I don't know. Um, but anyway, that, that kind of gives me just a, a, a little bit of a chance to talk about just overall strategy as far as online business goes. Okay. Do, do, do. Okay, Anthony, if other companies selling real estate leads charge, say, 237 for leads for investors, however, the leads are not a, or not to one investor, but an entry area, Broward County, but the entry area, Broward County. However, the leads are not to one investor but to the entry area of Broward County. Um, I'm not sure exactly. I thought I knew where this question was going, Anthony. Um, the difference between, if you're talking about like exclusive leads, where somebody wants to sell their house and they you know, pick up the phone and call a number on a website to say, I buy houses, and you know, you're gonna charge 237 for that if it goes out to a bunch of people. Um, if you're selling exclusive, you can charge you can charge 60% more easily. So you, you could charge, you know, 325, 350 for that same lead if you're just selling it to one investor, if that's kind of what you're getting at with this. Um, otherwise, I'm not sure what this, what the second half is. Like if somebody wanted a specific, uh, a specific city in Broward County, which I believe is in Florida, if I'm not mistaken, um, then and you're selling it for the specific cities. Yeah, it, pretty much what you're gonna be able to do, the more specific you are, the higher your potential price is gonna be. You know, if you're selling South Beach, you're gonna be able to charge more than you are for Miami proper, most likely, just kind of the way things work. Um, so it kind of depends on how your question goes there at the end. Uh, Mike, yeah, thanks, makes sense. And, uh, as to a starting point, notice long tails and local are very underrepresented too. Uh, yeah, absolutely. My new contractor, JV Partner, wanted to know estimated calls we could expect. He's catching on uh, to the hard questions. Yeah, um, I would estimate, do your traffic estimates, Mike. Um, with that one, you're going to have even more wiggle room just because it's not reporting local. But just estimate down on your local level and say that's a baseline. I would estimate you're probably going to get two to three times that. Just And that's if you're, you're building a pretty tight site. The wider and more general your site is, the the higher that number is going to get. So, um, Pat, are you still targeting emergency situations? You know, honestly, I'm not that much, Pat, just because 
there were some people who came out with products that like, oh, go rank for these emergency niches and you can sell all these leads for all this money. And so everybody and their dog went out and, and made these stupid videos. And ho hopefully you're not one of them. I, I'm not speaking to anybody specifically, but a lot of times the videos are just really, really generic and they're ranking in, you know, many, many niches and they're just specifically set up for lead gen. I'm not saying that's bad. I teach it, but it just became harder to to put that stuff into place because some online marketers really promoted that as a way to create your kind of online lead gen empire. And so that particular segment, the emergency segment, got a little bit blown out and it'll calm down you know but for the most part it uh you know let me just see let's see what comes up here yeah so let's see yeah there aren't even any yeah here's a a video on page one john green it's a doodle video You know, it's got the, looks like clock face going on. You know, they didn't even take the time to take the video scribe off of this. Still works fine, but, you know, it's definitely not a branded company. You know, there's no plumbing logo here. It's most likely an online marketer who is selling leads. And, you know, in all likelihood, I don't have, this is not on something I have, uh, the Moz toolbar. They've probably done some things to up the, the page authority and trust flow to their channel and or YouTube video. At the time I was doing that, nobody really had done that at all. And I could put up I could put up a video pretty much rank without doing anything. I'd embed it on a website that had the same keyword as the EMD and I would rank. It just it's a little more challenging now. It's still valuable, but I, I really don't target that segment of the uh keywords as much as I did then. All right, thing. Uh, I've made a living for a good amount of time in my life in sales and marketing. I was a landscape contractor and had to hustle. Uh, you mentioned SEO might be hard to break into. Um, is it only because of the learning curve? Because that seems like that would be a natural fit for my skill set. Yeah. If you've got that as your background thing, you are definitely well suited to this industry. Um, because there is a little bit of a learning curve and you know technical hurdle if you're somebody who can put your head down and learn this stuff for the most part I would say well just with the SEO people that I've talked to the reason a lot of SEO agencies come into being is because the person who can rank a site is very often not the person who can sell that ranking and the people who can do both are few and far between and are so incredibly valuable that they're not hireable. You know, I, 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 it, not like I'm some amazing, I don't know what somebody would have to offer me to get me to come to work for them as just a salaried, you know, um, employee. Um, cotton, what, I mean, what, would, what kind of salary would Cotton demand in being able to sell SEO the way he does as well as do it? So if you've got the background and that personality type and just kind of the, the approach to, yeah, I'm going to get out there, hustle, put this thing together, absolutely, it's a great thing to get into because that's not something, whether it's now or five years from now, that's going to go away. If you're able to communicate the value of SEO, it, it's an incredible combination to have that along with the ability to do it or fulfill it. And when I, I, I contrast the two, fulfill it and do it, some people want to be able to sit down, type in you know the HTML code for a link, and put together all that stuff and have that be what they actually do. Fulfilling it, you can accomplish by either doing that or knowing exactly what to hire and train somebody to do. Um, I spent the last 18, 20 months doing everything myself. And I'm glad I did. But I'm at a place now where I'm going to start outsourcing 
and insourcing you, and I may be hiring people to do some of that fulfillment in-house for me. Um, so yeah, if you're in a, in, a, in that situation, uh, you're going to find very quickly that the, the actual people that are good at sales in this industry, you're gonna be able to talk around 18 ways from Sunday as far as the actual technical SEO goes and vice versa, which then means you can contrast yourself and make yourself unique in the marketplace with, um, with both of those groups. Um, oh, Pat, yeah, I was going to post the link. Um, if you post links in this thing, Pat, I'm sure you kind of figured it out. It gets all cut up and hacked just because the, uh, the way this chat box works, it, it tries not to create a platform. Um, this is actually an embed, so this is an iframe. The chat box is an iframe on a very high domain authority site. I was actually kind of playing around with it to see if I could use it to get backlinks to other places, um, but they hack it out, so it doesn't work so well. Um, and then Pat, great to know that that business model stands the test of time. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, Pat. You know, one of the things that, the reason it does, well, one of the reasons probably is that there are certain industries that are predominantly made up of businesses that are owned or run by someone who was in that trade before. Construction is definitely one of them. Um, certain medical professions are very much in that same um, business type where a, a doctor will start a, a you know a, a private practice office you know his business is an extension of him being a doctor um, somebody who does framing and builds houses their framing business is an extension of that person being a framer and more often than not their business is pretty light on marketing you know, they, they work with word of mouth and the fact that they're good at their job and they eventually decided they didn't want to take, you know, a small portion of the overall project to do the hammering and decided to start their own company. So there's certain niches it works better for than others. I'll just say that. But uh, construction is definitely one of those. All right, Paul Fletch, a little bit overwhelmed with all the NHB info. What was the best place to start? DAS, PBNs. Um, so... The best place to start, and, and I don't know whether you've gone through or not, but the steps to getting started, this orientation video, David actually spent a great deal of time putting this together. So this getting started is going to talk about how you join the Facebook group and all these other things. But these orientation videos, I'm, I'm not going to hit play because it will start eating my bandwidth. And I've got a bunch, but I don't want to bog the video feed that I'm pushing out right now um, these videos I went through and I'd been involved with OMG for quite a while before they came out um, that orientation video is is extremely valuable on a lot of different levels um, beyond that what I would do is look at Greg's I mean this the core training here is set up more whoops I didn't mean to highlight the whole thing. It's set up more or less sequentially, meaning the introduction. Some of this stuff about the updates is really nice to see how Google changes over time. Um, if for no other reason than to realize that while Google does change and we need to change with it, the changes are kind of stepwise and somewhat incremental. And they're not, they, they actually should be embraced because what they tend to do is to push all the rest of the competition out of the marketplace. Um, beyond that, what you mentioned as far as the, uh, the DAS, where is it? What you mentioned DAS and PBNs. Um, what I would do is look at getting into how Greg sets up his site. So, um, skip the hosting just because it's going to be technical and bog you down a little bit. If you're still kind of like, Whoa, I need to get my bearings a little bit. Go through this huge demo by Greg, this over the shoulder series. He goes through and shows you just how to set up a site. Now, while this is kind of technical and push these buttons here and there, he is going to start in this series. He talks about linking, anchor text, and some things like that, how these PBNs work. The PBN model of our links is still the simplest way to start learning how SEO works. 
Now, I won't say it's the easiest thing to implement because there are some other things, and you talked about them, DAS, and even more specifically some stuff that can be done with kind of one feed in RSS, which is going to be the, the kind of retelling of that's coming out with a plug-in shortly in Breakthrough. Um, because what it lets you do is, and what I'm talking, so this series lets you see how those links work, lets you see what the anchor text needs to be and why it needs to be certain things. Those other methods of employing link building are essentially just an extrapolation of that understanding what a good link is and why it's a good link. So domain authority stacking is essentially good link building with other people's platforms. PBN, we own that site. That's why we like them so much. They're things we own and control. We can't have the administrator of WordPress, you know, WordPress.com, come and kill our, you know, Web 2.0 property that was there because, oh, this doesn't look like it uh, adheres to our terms of service. Because we own PBN sites, we really like them. Um, they're part of the network that we own and control. We put the most focus there, and they are incredibly valuable. Beyond that, domain authority stacking and some things along those lines are just other methods to employ those same techniques. Um, if you're still in that overwhelm, go through this series and maybe go through it twice. Um, let me see if there's another spot that will give you a good impression of... Yeah, here's the... I, I, I'm still getting the the or organization of our content and breakthroughs a little different than we had last year, and so I'm still trying to remember exactly where everything is here. I actually like the organization here better, and uh, this these three videos here are going to talk about the reason we build backlinks the way we do with the anchor text and things like that. So that's going to definitely give you some framing for whoops for how we build links and the anchor text that we put into them. Um, then the supremacy, I think this has got some different, yeah. So this talks about buying your PBNs. This is uh, pretty much some techniques for getting your PBNs to be more powerful. Um, kind of takes into account domain authority stacking on your PBNs. So kind of a cool technique. And then just all sorts of over the shoulder videos on setting your PBN sites up. So this is some places I think that you definitely benefit um, fleshing your understanding of that stuff out. Um, another thing I will comment on, and I, I always almost kind of forget a little bit, uh, we, we recently you know opened up Breakthrough and you know we have a lot of new members in, and this stuff that's mentioned here for Law of Implication, this is essentially the framework that the person, uh, David Mills, who is one of the founding partners of OMG, uses for the, the way his brain works. And he uses this method to put together all of his business moves, um, his relationships, all that kind of thing. It should not be discounted. It, in my opinion, it is more valuable overall than the technical training for SEO. And if you're kind of in a place of, whoa, there's a lot here and I'm a little bit swamped with all this technical stuff, you can go there and start to understand the method for learning this most effectively and the way of approaching it in a, a process or a system that will lead to breakthroughs which let you essentially do things almost a second nature when you're to a place where you know how to rank a site okay I can rank a site now let me focus on the client getting you get the client getting down to okay yeah I can go get clients anytime I want well that, that you know that's a business pretty much you got fulfillment you got client getting alright there you go off and run it um, and so this breakthrough stacking series is really something that is is definitely it's heady, meaning you know you're gonna have to think about it a little bit, and um, you know it's a little. Uh, it's not abstract. I don't want to use the word abstract, but you've definitely got to project and use your imagination a little bit. I find, 
but it's incredibly valuable, especially for people who are new to SEO, um, because it does feel like there are so many new things to learn. This gives you a framework for learning that effectively, putting it together, and then even more, being able to use it when you need it. So hopefully that speaks to that a little bit, Paul. Um, it, it certainly, it, I, I will say most, I won't say all, just because I'm sure there's some people who came in and they're like, oh yeah, we got it all. But almost all of the people who join OMG feel that way. They get in and they're like, oh my gosh, look at all these modules. Look at, I didn't even stop to think that I'm going to have to learn how to, you know, host these sites or how I'm going to, you know, protect, you know, privacy protection, who is and IP address and all this other kind of things like, oh my gosh, there's a lot here. It, it It's very digestible, it, it, especially if you go through it the right way. And that breakthrough stacking series will help you understand a, a very, very effective way of going through that. So. Um, and then beyond that, you know, a very good way of kind of pl playing with whether or not you know this stuff, it's just get a site, set it up, play with it. You know, you don't necessarily have to rank it. You don't have to, you know, I, <laughs> when I, I, I say this because when I started, I almost thought like when I was going to build my first link, I was going to do something wrong and like literally in a day or two, I was going to get a letter from Google saying, hey, you know, we saw, we found what you did here. We don't like it. And it, it was, I mean, some crazy, you know, use of my imagination that probably came from a lot of, of weird junk that I dealt with earlier in my life. But uh, it, it's very, um, it's very much uh, a, a good strategy to put together a play site early on and just practice setting up WordPress and then uninstall it. And then set up WordPress again, try to break it, figure out what you can do to break it. And then set up WordPress and, and install some silos, see what happens then, you know, play around with this stuff. It, it doesn't have to be super serious and long-term every time. I would definitely recommend doing that as you start to uh, put that together. All right, Cliff, in terms of anchor text, do you ever build niche specific anchor text <clears throat> to a more branded URL or just the relevant inner page, i.e. find a plumber, to Denver City Guide. Um, yeah, if it's going to be pretty generic anchor text like that, Cliff, it'll probably be pointed at the at the home page. Um, well, I won't always say that even because I do have some stuff that I do with domain authority stacking that is not the exact keyword that I have pointed to the inner pages. It just kind of depends. Um, it depends on how many links you're going to need to get the thing to rank. If you've got a good silo site built in local, you really aren't going to need that many links to, to rank. And because of that, you can start out with the exact match anchor text you want for the page you want and see what happens. If you need more than that, you're probably going to have to play with anchor text a little bit. Maybe go more generic, like find a plumber, or you know, um, you know, plumbers in Denver or something that's more generic like that. Um, but I always kind of like to start with exact and see what happens. You know, a lot of times exact is, you know, on a on a local site at least, is enough to get yourself ranked. Um, all right, Pat. Ha -ha. Uh, no, absolute newbie to all things marketing and internet marketing. <laughs> yeah, um, uh, I definitely was there. I had no idea what in the world I was doing when I started all this. All right, thing. My video stopped playing, but I can still interact on the question portion of the page. Interesting. Um, yeah, let me type in here. Just uh, I'm typing this because if Thane can't watch the video, he can't hear me. Um, but yeah, if that ever happens for anybody who is watching, uh, the the Hangout platform is pretty sweet. So if you do have any glitch or whatever, like my computer can totally lock up and I can turn my computer off 
and go back into my Google Plus and find this broadcast, and I can catch right back up to it, which may happen at some time. It, it's uh, happened a handful of times over the last year. Um, but for anybody who's on these pages, if your video stops playing or you have some kind of weird glitch, you can just come back to this play this page and hit play, and it should catch you up to where we are currently. Um, I'm not saying it will happen every time because there may be some things I haven't tested yet or haven't experienced, but with my testing as well as what other people have experienced when that happens, should be able to just refresh the page or kill your browser and open it back up and come back to this URL, and it should be essentially the live bro the, essentially the live broadcast again. So, all right, Steve, hey Fletch, I'm uh, new to OMG, so I haven't gone through too many of the videos yet. Do we teach how? to communicate the value of SEO to clients. Yes, absolutely. If so, can you tell me where the videos are related to that, please? Yeah, there are a lot of different places, Steve. And even that probably sounds like, well, great. No, I want to go find the one place where it is. Um, I'll show you some specific places it is. Uh, da, 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 da. Let's go find, a person springs to mind immediately is Cotton. Um, so... Yeah, so this this is uh, this monetization is more kind of your strategy, like what you're going to do. You're going to sell leads. You're going to sell SEO. You're going to sell affiliate products. Um, but if you're selling leads, you can go in here and look at the videos I put together on how to communicate value and speak to clients. It also has some stuff in client getting that I talk about here. Um, I'll show you, I'm just backing out again, back to the main membership area here again, and we'll go find, I may have already missed it. I'm looking for Cotton's training right now. And it may not have been added yet. I know some of the stuff David is rolling out as we continue to put this membership area for, oh yeah, this reverse marketing. This is really good. This is Joe Marfolio. This will talk about some of the value um, and uh, client communication process from Joe's perspective. Uh, this Hung Lee method, this is uh, based on some direct mail campaigns and ideas that Hong put together and uses to just fully crush. He's, he's more than six figures a month at this point in time. Lucian here has got uh, some really great strategies in LinkedIn of targeting clients and communicating with them as well. Um, I'm not, like I said, I'm still kind of getting used to the orientation or the organization of the breakthrough site. So where is Cotton stuff? Now, let's just look here and see. Yeah, no, it's not in here. Yeah, I'll have to find it. Um, I know Cotton's got a lot of stuff coming out, and I'm not sure if he's just not got it. Oh, here. Let's see if this has got it. Yeah, you're going to be able to get some uh, good content on communicating value as well as a specific method of using SEO with the Google My Business listings. So for keywords, like this plumbing keyword, right, emergency plumber in Denver, you see here all these local results come up in the maps. That is a specific type of SEO that we can make use of as well. And that citation client crusher section that we're on here, local citation cash crusher with Cotton Grammar, talks about how to do that and how to sell that, which are both incredibly powerful. So definitely be a great place to, to start um, developing some of the framework that a lot of our members use to talk to and acquire clients. <clears throat> All right, Pat Fletch, I like the idea of paper lead sites. 
to learn how to do this, uh, just watch all the coaching sessions. Is there a specific place to find the run through? Oh yeah, um, I, and you may have caught this. I think I just ran through it when I was um, talking about that stuff, but. Um, I put together a whole series on that, and it should be in the monetization section. So designing your game, whoops, designing your game plan, and then uh, Fletch on paper lead. So, yeah, if you just go to, well, this is the main the main page on it. Here's an overview what the model looks like, how it works, and then I just go through step by step and how I set all of it up, how it works why I think it's a great business model, what you put on your website, keyword strategy, um, types and frameworks for videos, if you're gonna use some um, some either lead gen videos or client getting videos, both, they both work well. Um, and then, whoops, that opened up on this whole other page, I didn't need to do that. Um, this last link here is to uh, the actual paperwork that I get checked off on and signed when I start selling leads to a new customer and so it just kind of gives you an idea of the things the pieces of information you're gonna need from the client on getting the phone calls forwarded to the right phone number um, how the invoices are gonna get sent and paid all that kind of thing so um, on paper lead there is also Joe's got some stuff on it and when I say Joe Joe Marfolio I should have mentioned it um, so Joe talks about a little bit here in the uh, in the free traffic section follow up with Joe Marfolio and I think there's another place where Joe Marfolio talks about it um, yeah this local CPA CPA stands for cost per action it means you get paid when something happens um, it it can be a phone call. CPA does include phone calls, but it could also be just somebody filling out a form and say, yeah, I might be interested in having a walk-in tub installed in my house. Would you give me a call and let me know what that's about? So you can get paid through CPA offers very much the same way you would with paper lead, but you don't have to go through the step of getting a client yourself. So if I were gonna set up a website to sell walk-in tubs, I would have to go find a company that wanted to buy those leads, and then I have to set the website up and get it ranked and then start creating leads to coming in. If you go with CPA, you can go on these CPA networks and look for things that people are trying to sell, and they just want somebody to promote it. So you can just grab their essentially affiliate code, put that thing on your site, you rank the site and you get paid get paid less than you do if you work directly with the company, but it, it's one less thing to have to worry about, especially if you're getting started. So if you don't have an established network of companies, or if you're not you know, the personality type that you know, really wants to go out there and you know, talk and sell this and communicate the value live, then CPA is a great way to make use of that same niche, but not have to worry about all the client side stuff. So those are, those are all places where you can look into that business model more. And uh, if you've got any specific questions, you don't, you know, don't hesitate to reach out. Um, you know, my email's listed all over the place. I'm, I, I can't always be super responsive as far as the time it takes to get back on those. But, um, you know, when I see them, I do, I do respond to them. So um, Facebook is usually a, a, a better way to get in touch with me um, through a personal message there. Do, 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 do. Where are we? All right, Mike. Um, any ideas on YouTube, Vimeo, etc., accounting toward dupe content? Uh, meaning, if I create a few videos, maybe four or five, and seed them on inner pages, would using the same video several times tank the overall site? Trying to get quality content for human visitors. Yeah, not going to have a problem at all, Mike, especially if you use YouTube. Um, you know, that, that site that I showed, my demo site here. You know, all these videos are other people's videos. They're all over my website. I've gone through and looked, and some of the some of these weird keywords, like there's some that aren't even locating and inspecting. Like this video, this is a home inspector, right? Well, that's not gonna be. Anyway, some of these videos are on this silo for Arvada, 
but they're also the exact same video like on Aurora or on Westminster. So it means I've got the same exact video embedded four different places on my website in totally different you know silos. It hasn't taken the site at all. This thing ranks for an ungodly amount of keywords. I think it's got like 70 some number one key number one listings and a lot of those number ones it only reports the first so I'll be ranked like number one and number two or number one and number four so if it's videos and it's being taken you know in context like the vSilo plugin does you're not gonna have any issues with dupe content um, you know I, I, I built this site to and I'm not saying you won't ever but currently you don't and it's not something I see Google changing anytime quickly because they like these websites to like a site like this let me just click on a different spot on this thing man let me kill this like this video once this plays and it gets to the end it'll bring up an ad for more YouTube videos so because this video <coughs> pardon me here hang on a second So because this video is on my site and this video is ranked for this keyword, Google now has another opportunity to sell ads. And I, Google kind of likes to make money and they make most of their money through ads. And that's the reason I don't think this is something that's gonna cause people problems uh, anytime soon. Um, so I, at the moment, am wholeheartedly recommending if you have not built out a site yet and content is something that might slow you down a little bit, just go through and use something like vSilo that I used on this website and build out three or four silos in some local niche and put a CPA offer on it and make some money. You know, this thing required very, very little in the way of SEO other than good on site and um, a few links, you know, really, really minimal in the way of linking so okay back to it here um, oh on that note notice we're kinda um, this isn't a big deal but we, we typically run these sessions about 90 minutes and um, that's almost it's kind of a functional limit at 90 minutes not only does my voice kinda wear out but attention seems to fade a little bit now that's not to say it's a hard and fast rule you know going over 15 or 20 minutes isn't really that big a deal um, but I do want everybody to know that we answer all questions. So if we get to a situation where we're really not able to get to all the questions, if we have a bunch of people on these, um, these office hours and Q&As and we can't get to, the, to all the questions, we'll just start doing more sessions per week. So uh, just wanted that to get out there for our, our new members. <clears throat> all right, Steve says, great, thanks, Fletch. Yep, yep, yep. And Pat, excellent. Okay, Mike, nice. Uh, it's great to know. Uh, it's the hardest part of this to me, uh, getting 30 pages all unique. Uh, do you change up the text or keep very close to the same vertical? Uh, building one now. Yeah, so uh, depending on what you do, it was Mike, right? I just want to get the names right. Yeah, okay, so Mike, depending on what you do, this plugin, this vSilo, this, this written content down here at the bottom on each of these pages, this is actually scraped from YouTube as well. So this is the YouTube description that comes from that video. And then on videos, let me see. Yeah, so this, yeah, surprising actually kind of. Um, I was gonna find one for Denver Plumber. This probably, does this have comments? Yeah, sometimes, yeah, this, so this is actually some good SEO because they've actually given links back to other videos that they have to try to do some YouTube stuff. Um, th what I'm trying to get at is this plugin will not only go grab your description, which gives you some written text that's probably kind of keyword dense and got you some good stuff there, but it will also most likely, well, not in this situation, it'll go scrape the con comments too so that you've got some what looks like live interaction on your website. So yeah, you don't have to really, 
Um, and, and what I'm getting at there is n not only is this, this is blatantly exactly like what exists on YouTube. Exactly. This was out, this was just went out and scraped the YouTube channel for this keyword and went and got this content and brought it back to this website. And I mean, I don't know. This, if I rank burst, what was that? Burst pipes Denver. It's probably a decent keyword. I may not rank for this at all. Um, yeah, right there. So I'm number one, two, three, four, five, six. I'm number six for that keyword. Um, and it's just a, a blatant dupe content from a YouTube channel. So. Uh, you know, I, 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 I wouldn't say that's the highest and best use of SEO or content, but it works. And for people who are just getting started, sometimes it's nice to use something like that as a way to play and see, oh, wait, this, you know, this is what I need to do here. I can get the thing ranked. Now, if I work on maybe conversion or positioning, or maybe I just built a bunch of sites like that, and they all make me a few hundred bucks a week and, uh, you know, life is a heck of a lot better. Um, you can definitely do that too. So, hopefully, that helps you out there, Mike, uh, as well as everybody else on the um, on the call today. And when I say this, yeah, it, I'm kind of I'm not backtracking on what I said. A lot of our tutorials talk about going out and getting unique articles for our money sites. And that is still ideal. But when you're setting things up and just playing the first time around, sometimes it's nice to be able to kind of play with house money. And like a plugin like vSilo lets you do that. It lets you set up a site, get some content that you didn't have to pay for, and start playing around with SEO. And I think that's a great way to get started because it doesn't mean you have to go out and order articles or spend a lot of time writing your own content. I actually did not do this when I started. I started writing my own content and I just put all that stuff together. Um, and I was happy to do so. But if you're not kind of of that mindset, then this is a great way to start and get a site up and, and start playing around with it. All right, Pat. On your My Life Plumbing site, I noticed that there's a couple of different phone numbers on the page. Uh, can I assume you'd change this if it was going to be a paper lead site versus a demo site? Um, I don't know. I'd have to think about it. What you're referring to, probably, Pat, is the fact that you know in this description here, there is a phone number, and it this phone number would most likely correspond to this video. Let me see. Yeah, 2162. It, it is. These two correspond. Um, I really haven't looked into conversion percentage on this website a lot. But what I will say is it, it creates a lot of phone calls. And, you know, on a site just like this, if somebody's playing the video and this phone number is in it the whole time, um, like if you play this, if you move this away, so you can see the phone number at the top goes away, but yeah, so they did actually a decent job. What they did was a hangout broadcast of their screen so that that phone number stays in it all the time. They actually, th that was a smart strategy. Most of these other videos, I'll just click over to a different page here. Yeah, so like on this video, somebody's watching this. At the point in time when they see like, oh yeah, whoever made this video is going to be able to solve my problem. You know, immediately the eye kind of goes up here. Like, this is the phone number on this website that has this video. I'm going to give these guys a call. Even though there's a phone number here. It's smaller. It's harder to see. Even though the video right below, or the area right below a video is the place where you want to have conversion copy. If this were set up for a client, what I would do is have this phone number here. I would also have this phone number directly under the video in a big banner. Um, and then I would probably leave all these other phone numbers there because I'm using their content. I don't want to 
like if they put it on YouTube, so they agreed to however this thing gets used. Um, but at the same time, I would probably not go through the trouble of changing that phone number just because alpinecompanies.com, that is their phone number. I'm going to leave it alone and leave it that way. But what I would do is probably take this phone number, make a banner ad, stick it right below the video, and push the rest of the content down some, and then not have to worry about uh, any of the rest of the content or changing any of the rest of the content. It would be a quick and easy way to do that. And there's a plugin that you can use for that called uh, Short Codes, Short Codes UI. Uh, so if you're going to do something like that, that was the, that's the plugin I would use. And all that stuff I learned from Network Empire. They share a lot of that stuff in the uh, training that they put together for Project Breakthrough and for Director's Cut. So, All right, Steve, awesome. Uh, what was that plugin for the videos called again? Yeah, I'll just type it in here, Steve. And I'll show you after I type this in here, Steve. Um, I'm almost 100% certain. Let me make sure. So... Where are we here? Yeah, training software Q&A from Network Empire. So if you go to the Network Empire main page, vSilo plugin and training right here, Steve. They've got their own training on how to use this plugin. And I th think... Oh yeah, they've got a direct uh, purchase link because it's a premium plugin. Um, it's honestly, I, I would I would pay five hundred dollars for it. I don't think. Oh yeah, see they've got a markdown for Project Breakthrough people to twenty seven dollars. It, it's worth that all day long. Um, so yeah, purchase it through this because I think the only way I got it when I picked it up the first time was to get a membership at their site, their full membership site, and it cost a hundred dollars a month to me. So just buy the vSilo plugin and you have some training right here on how to use it. And then Chris Morris here talks about it. He's uh he's actually in Mesa. He's right here in Phoenix. I met him at the first OMG live. But I yeah, I, I'm a huge a huge uh, proponent of that plugin. Uh, especially for building out new sites. It's a quick, really quick way to build out a really well designed internally linked website and get content on your pages which is what you need to have in order for your site to get indexed which means Google starts paying attention to it that's the first step in getting ranked so cool cool um, alright guys we're about an hour and a half in so uh, just putting the word out if you have any last minute questions please put those in the chat box now um, I'll give it a couple minutes and make sure that uh, you know everything gets answered here and that there's not something that popped in somebody's mind right at the end. Um, other than that, we'll go ahead and wrap up the session. Um, as always, our coaching and office hours sessions are recorded and the replays are typically available within about 48 hours in the membership area. And you know there are some times when it, <clears throat> it may not be that exact situation. Uh, but we do do everything in our po power to get these recorded. Sometimes we have some, you know, technical glitches or, or weirdness. But um, and then Steve, you're just making sure so the content that vSilo puts on your site doesn't get flagged as duplicate content. No, it does not, Steve. Um, I, I've got uh, I've got at least two dozen websites that are built solely with that vSilo. The only content on this Denver Plumber website is content that vSilo went and got. There's not, well, let's say the only content. I wrote this, and I wrote this, and I, well, here's this. This is Laura Ipsum stuff. This is still the stock Latin that my theme came with, even down here, you know. So, you know, for people who go into too much about, oh, dupe content, they, they just, they haven't tested it. They don't know. Um, I'm not, like I said, I'm not trying to say that this is the best way to do it, but don't get hung up too much on it. You know, I noticed a lot of people, you know, talking about, well, there's no way to, you know, you couldn't do SEO if you didn't, you know, go through Copyscape and all this kind of thing. 
you know, maybe if you're trying to spam content on like Facebook or something like that, but on websites, if you're making use of and citing YouTube, which I do, that's, you know, an iframe video like this, the actual code on this video is a link back to this video. I'm giving a backlink to this video from my website. But the interesting thing is that my website outranks that video most of the time. And it's because of silo architecture that it does that. Um, and so, yeah, it does not get flagged as dupe content, Steve. All right, Pat, thanks. Extremely helpful. Thank you, thank you. Um, and then, Pat, do coaching sessions finish at some point for Project J? You know, I talked to uh, David about that, Pat. Um, and I don't know if he has a, 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 hard, a hard line on the end date, but, yeah, they will. Um, I'm just not sure what that date is. Uh, David will set that, um, you know, as you probably can surmise. I'm coaching and, you know, and doing office hours, so I'm here. Uh, at some point in time, you know, that uh, the time frame, you know, that we have live coaching open and available to new members, you know, transitions from um, kind of, you know, one group to the next. Uh, but that's a you know a specific question for David that I don't I don't have the the answer for and I don't know that he has a, a direct date for it yet. Um, I know with Project Juggernaut I think it was four months that was available. Um, I'm actually not 100% sure what the time frame for Breakthrough is, but uh, you know suffice it to say it's a lot of time and uh, really should get you kind of pointed in the right direction. Um, and, and you know all that said, Pat, if you if you get stuck and, and you're outside of your frame, you know how you know available most of us are in the in the membership group. So you know hopefully we can uh, we can get you pointed in the right direction if there's a an issue there. All right, Steve. Uh, okay, it's brilliant. Thanks, Fletch. Yeah, absolutely, man. Um, yeah, you, you'll like it. Anybody who's um, kind of like you know a little daunted with building a new website or whatever, just go you know buy some domain name similar to what that mile high plumbing is and go buy a $27 plugin get your website hosted do some keyword research and build out a silo website and track your keywords and yeah you know start start doing SEO it's fun all right Ryan whoops Ryan uses uh, says you mentioned using CPA offer on sites. Which network do you recommend for CPA offers? Is that covered in the training somewhere? Yeah, Ryan, I, I would go talk. Joe's got more experience with CPA. There's only a few CPA offers that I promote, and they are not they're not really the big common ones. They were they were companies that specifically approached me because I had ranked so well in certain niches. And they, they essentially asked me how I was monetizing my websites. And they said, well, we can pay you better than that. And so we put together a CPA type um, situation for that. But um, that was kind of a side note. I'm sorry I got distracted with my own story there. Uh, that training that Joe Marfolio has on local CPA, which is in monetization, I believe. Yeah, deciding your game plan right here. And then this is Joe Marfolio, local CPA. Um, you know, he talks about uh, the CPA companies that you need to sign up with and how to get approved fast is right here. So he's showing Offer Vault. Um, it's a big, that's a big uh, hub for a lot of the independent CPA companies. But he's got a few down here that would be also uh, very good. So you can just click those links and, uh, and be taken to those, um, those networks. And then, yeah, this is Joe's got a, a good little demo here on Call Zoo, how to set that up if you need to. Um, I'm actually, <laughs> this is funny, I, I mentioned I'm getting a call right now that is from that Denver Plumber website. So, yeah, if this were being sent to a local client, I'd make $45. Um, so that's kind of fun. <laughs> uh, I think that happened my last office hours too, which is kind of funny. All right. Um, and then Steve, would you mind showing us one of your sites that you're using? Uh, Visa on CPA on, uh, no worries if not, but if uh, you have one, you don't mind us uh, seeing, that'd be really cool, thanks. Um, I don't have one at this time, Steve. So 
Uh, I, I definitely open up and share a lot of things that are working. If I don't have something that I can show, I make a copy of it. Uh, but, you know, as, as we talk about, all of the coaches very much are, are not, we don't make most of our money teaching this stuff. We make most of our money doing this stuff. And a lot of my network is that way. So I've got silo sites that are set up almost identical to that Mile High Plumbing site. But right under that video, I'll have my CPA banner at. And so they look nearly identical to that Mile High Plumbing website. And directly under that video will be a banner ad for the CPA offer. And if they have a phone, um, you know, hot transfer, they take calls, I'll just put that uh, call tracking and call forwarding on the number that I have on the website and do that same kind of thing. So I don't have one I could show you at the moment, Steve. Uh, I probably, no, I don't want to do that because um, I was going to say one, one of the things with CPA is if you wind up sending a lot of junk leads through, they will kick you out of the network. And so I, I tend to not show any of my sites that have live CPA offers on them because if stuff gets shared around too much, um, you know, people are like, well, I want to, you know, not even really knowing. I don't think it's necessarily malicious, but they're like, oh, I'm going to call this number and see what this sounds like when somebody does pick up. You know, if I get too much of that, you get flagged. Some of those CPA offers are pretty tight with that. You'll get flagged as not um, sending valuable leads, and then they'll boot you out of the uh, the network. So, um, and that's that's kind of the the reasoning or the background on that, Steve. So, hope you hope you understand. Um, yeah, thanks for the tips. We'll look into it. Uh, roughly, how many pages do the CPA sites need? Um, need not many. Um, you know, some of the small ones I have are probably no more than eight or ten. But for the most part, like I said, now strategy-wise, I tend to build those kind of, you know, a little bit bigger sites. That Mile High site has, oh, 200-some pages. And then, uh, I don't know, probably, probably, I don't know, over a 1,000 posts. Um, site, milehighplumbing.com. So, yeah, there's, um, oh, yeah, see, some of these are even coming back as different. Um, yes, yeah, so there's about 700 indexed pages that have, have that in it. So, you know, it's probably, I don't know, somewhere around that five, 700 pages of total content. <laughs> Okay, guys, on that note, uh, I'm going to go ahead and wrap up the broadcast. So uh, I typically run my office hours on Tuesdays. doesn't mean I always do, uh, but the times typically vary from week to week. So make sure you check your main news feed. Uh, the news feed is what we call, if you just log into the Project Breakthrough or Juggernaut, um, membership areas, all this main section of content here and going on down. David writes this and he keeps track of any news items that come up. Um, he usually updates it fairly regularly, um, but definitely every time there is something noteworthy that changes that needs to be uh, made mention of. Uh, it's the best place to keep track of schedules and things of that nature. Uh, Facebook group is great for, for spending a lot of time and learning and interacting, but as far as just really figuring out what schedule and times things are happening, this is the place to come. So uh, on that note, uh, definitely wish you all the best this week. I know uh, Cotton is going to be doing something, I think, tomorrow where the replay will be available to Project Breakthrough members very shortly. Um, and then, uh, yeah, I'd have to look and see here. So um, Network Empire replay is up. If you are looking at getting into some of the domain authority stacking, uh, those office hours replays for them are incredible. Uh, I think I learned as, as much or more about domain authority stacking their first office hours ses session as I had probably in the previous six months. So definitely highly recommend that. Um, anyway, guys, I will wrap up there and uh, talk to you all very soon. Take care. Yeah, I'd have to look and see here. So... Um,
network empire replay